I'm focusing on my latest book, which is called A Music Lover's Art, Wood Songs About Musical Composition. And I've never had more fun uh, making a verse recital preparation because I'm a fiddler, a violinist, a folk singer, a chorister. I totally love music. And so I decided to make a whole book of wood music about pitch music. Interesting, huh? Uh, I hope you'll like it. Uh, I'll give you a wide variety of little short uh, examples to give you a pretty decent sampler, I think, uh, of the totality. Let's begin with Mozart because he's a great place to begin, always with classical music, which is my main focus here. I do have a certain amount of folk. Uh, uh, um, Mozart is attractive to nearly everyone because he just his work is packed with the, the catchiest tunes. Now, in this poem I've chosen, I pick one of the, one of the uh, uh, strangest pieces I've encountered by him. I've played it on the violin, and it's one of my favorite. But it is uh, not a habitually um, uh, constructed piece. It's not what you'd expect. It's called the Trumpet Concerto because it begins with a trumpet call, somewhat like this. That's a lovely way to start. Sets an excellent mood. Mozart loves the major. Uh, and then, of course, the orchestra joins him and they play it together in dialogue. So then what? I'll tell you what, it disappears. It completely vanishes. And that's the remarkable thing uh, that that could happen. Mozart is always lauded as the master of uh, perfect form. Well, those that particular time, the devil or the demon, the spirit, the guardian had some Thing a little different in mind. He gave him a, 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 a theme. It was beautiful. He worked it over for a couple of minutes and then uh, he was given a cornucopia of other things to, for, to have uh, um, to, let, to which to lend his attention. Let's go with the trumpet concerto, the one in D major. The trumpet concerto, the one in D major, is deeply appealing to me. Golden Ager, who young learned to play it on bold violin with summons heraldic will mozart begin arpeggio triad exhorting and forceful yet such to supply the composer resourceful can muster that after the call has been made he other loved treasures will haste to unlaid the call of the trump will awakening blazon yet after the dithyram brave diapason tis wholly forgot and will never come back not oddly we yet cannot notice the lack there's more cornucopial store than a hoarder could ever sort through in legitimate order with rule of the tools in the school to accord here Weltering welling, storms heavenly poured. The horses of night, roaring forth in a thunder, will blinding arrive in their writhing. A wonder, the wind that we breathe as we ride in our might, must from the unmanifest come to the light. Okay. That'll give you a very nice idea how I feel about Mozart. And now let's try another composer equal to him in popularity, and that is Beethoven. I've made an unusual choice here. It happens that the, the uh, Russian poet uh, Nikolai Zabolotsky in the year 1946, when I was three years old, wrote a poem called Beethoven. And I don't think it's been surpassed, so I would like to read it to you in my translation, and I hope you enjoy. The very day your concords overcame, a world where efforts generated are, light overpowered light, passed cloud through cloudy frame, thunder advanced on thunder, star moved into star. An inspiration wild your mind would seize. In orchestras of thunder trembling storm, you, rising by nephilial degrees, touched music of the worlds with gesture warm. By trumpet groves, lakes melody inspelled, unwieldy, shapeless hurricanes you'd tame. 
Into the face of nature's self you yelled. Through organ tones your lion visage came. Before the face of all the world expanse, you so much thought in that vast cry could place that world word surged through the world it would enhance and turned to music wreathed the lion face again the bullhorned lyre will loud resound a shepherd flute beformed of eagle bone you understand the life charmed world around and good walled off from evil using tone and through the calm of world-extending space, up to the very stars, the ninth great wave, be opened thought from a music, word, gain grace, pound livened heart, and peace in triumph serve. I think before leaving Beethoven, I'd like to give you a word of my own about that wonderful Ninth Symphony of his. It's a short little thing. Uh, it's very close to being in the rhythm of the Ode to Joy. I call it Beethoven's Ninth. Music is an optimism. That's why hemming on die Freude helps the rhapsode to avoid a bleakness of the blank abysm. Cosmic optimisticism, waving in the rainbow prism, God in us enthusiasm, gladly clambers up the chasm. Falling at the thirstal altar, thirsting for the Bacchus fountain, climb the Dionysus mountain, fire drunk, never let us falter, frenzied fear, no paroxysm, ardor, harm, or fever spasm, be the ocean protoplasm with a music fused in chrism. Well, I had a good time, that's for sure. Now, let's see, of course we have to do, while we're doing the old time greats, J.S. Bach, who among the three happens to be my favorite. I wish I could read all the 14 poems I wrote to him here, but maybe you'll be just as happy if I can find myself to one. What I did was I began with uh, listening to a cantata, Bach wrote, uh, 300 cantatas and about 200 survive. Most of them are religious, uh, 18th century Lutheran theology, but the poets um, uh, adorned the thought, uh, both with depth and with beauty, so that uh, you'll find the, the lyrics, not, unlike the, those of, of some uh, lower class operas, these are not uh, in any way disappointing, but exalting. So uh, these are my thoughts, uh, triggered off by a sudden uh, reaction to a beautiful verse in German, of which I translate for you immediately. Des höchsten Gegenwart allein kann unsere Freuden Ursprung sein. Vergeh du Welt mit deiner Pracht, denn Gott hat, was uns glücklich macht. The presence of the highest can alone be source of joy to man. Grand world in glory vanish. We by God are given felicity. The setting by the master may in triple time our strife allay. Then let the mind in heaven dance and light within the laughing glance. The world, if distant, will return. The fires are one that nightly burn in us and in the farther star with yearnings that eternal are. The earth itself that inly shakes and molten ore a borning makes to bolt and roar with solar force will indicate our stellar course. I praise the six-winged angel flame, seraphic as the dance acclaim that bounds when mountain shouting leaps, for deepest ground no secret keeps. My hymn or plaint, the wind I breathe, are kin to storms that wailing seethe, may even tears 
their heat release from searing war to soaring peace. The heart to courage gave its name, and energy hard birth might claim in work the ergonomic law that isn't tame, but strong and raw. The worthy time when work is done will ardent rise from Carmen's sun and urge the rhyme of surging blood in thudding might with tidal flood. Let granted labor stay the test that I with prayer expanded breast, arising life attain whereby surrender may the mind in sky. Let's try something very different. Something that Schubert tried in setting to music a lyric by, by uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. It so happens <coughs> that this Erlkönig, uh, it, in, in German, the way it's spelled nowadays, uh, it um, it seems to mean the older king, and it seems to be a, a forest spirit, a, a really evil one. Uh, but uh, the word actually comes from Danish and perhaps doesn't mean an alder in Danish. And that's why Erold Kurnish is very often not translated on concert programs. But it's one of the most horrifying poems that Goethe ever wrote. And uh, it's one of the most gripping musical pieces that Schubert ever uh, put to music. And I'm going to just Rest content with a single a sample. This is called The Older King. Erl König is the older king who snatched the seer child. In Schubert's rumble thundering, setting of Goethe's wild and gripping and tormenting tale, the grisly forest force whirls the dear boy away in wail of wind, the wildered horse embrangled anguish in the gleams of wide-eyed bloody gaze on through the branching tangled streams shattering in a daze what then though of the horrid woe the father had the fit that seized his trampled spirit so i cannot speak of it there is no greater tragedy than for a child to die what deeps of seething jealousy in death's fell venom lie? From that somewhat off-putting topic, I want to turn to one of my all-time forever favorite compositions. It's by the American composer Samuel Barber. It's usually called Adagio for Strings. Uh, he, he didn't write it for string orchestra originally, but for string quartet. I had the wonderful opportunity to play that with my friends. It's written in five flats, not the easiest key for violinists because you don't get to play open strings very often. Uh, and, but the open strings multiply the resonances and give a more cheerful sound uh, uh, as of triumph in, as let's say, the, the Mozart trumpet concerto, but instead here we have a, a an invitation to thought, and I was shook. I was shook, shaken and and struck one day uh, by the fact uh, that it suddenly occurred to me that when this before this book before this composition was written in in 1936, it didn't exist, and so my parents never got to hear it. Anybody who lived before 1936 never got to hear this. Uh, and yet my imagination makes me feel whenever I encounter anything with this kind of power that it must have somehow existed forever. And I, I give that kind of a thought here. I made this piece my ideal at, in, as a poetry writer. I want to write something that, that's in such plain language and, say such ob and state such obvious things that uh, people would have a hard time imagining that it, it wasn't some ancient scripture that had somehow been around from time immemorial. Here's my poem then. It's called, I Want to Write What Never Wasn't There. I want to write what 
never wasn't there. Before the world was made, we saw it fair. Adagio for strings when barber penned, the heart was widened, holy might to bear. That only I'd inscribe which will remain. I crave in simple word a sacred strain. We need no more beginning nor an end, but for all is with us, and our aim is plain. I need to sing what couldn't not exist. The tearless eyes that smile by sky are kissed. Beyondness, kind, imponderable friend, our view has worth a mercy due in bliss. The chant, to chant I pray as when the heaven wooed that summer with a longing sigh endued, which through the entire creation would extend and blessed the best beloved it pursued. Now the next American music piece I'd like to try is all about Old Man River in a context of this program, the musical show, the artistic masterwork called Showboat by Kern and Hammerstein. I tie it in with my own life. I got to hear it sung when I was returning from a, a, from a trip to Russia uh, at the age of 19. It, uh, that experience has affected me so much that it comes back every time I now rehear the opera and the aria as I did last summer in uh, Cooperstown at Glimmerglass. <coughs> Just turned 19. In 1962, a five-week Russian language learning tour concluding in Helsinki, where we'd take a test to gauge what progress we had made. Our guide set up a splendid welcome back, and hearing Old Man River sung for us, with grief and happiness, I nearly cried. It stands, that monument to human fate and freedom, daring and acceptance mild, a tune of pain and prayer to end it all, a chant that finds vitality in strength, a wind breath gust that Jobian and raw, false comforters defying in their pride, climbs higher deeper sinks, and thinking calms. It sums the woe of workers at the dock who sweat the new enslaved that whites might play. When Julie, major actress in the show, from insult is defended by her spouse, and by the envy-gorged, defeated brute is slandered as containing Negro blood, so she'll be ignominiously fired. The river, seeing, nothing saying, waits. When gambler, Gaylord Nola leads away with lover's song that proves a make-believe, and later married bankrupt leaves and takes their little daughter, who so loved them both, a life in convent school abandonment to lead, where she is told to make-believe. The river nothing said kept rolling on. When Julie turned to drink before at last, regaining stardom of a showy kind, when Nola pardoned Gaylord, met by chance, and took him back, with sequel who can guess, though pardons at the central heart of things, 
and her forgiving nature all might bless, when ups and downs, when highs and lows are shown. The river, reft of comment words might try, itself is down and up, is low and high. When we're of death afraid, of life may tire, Vitality we godlike yet desire. Their labors lighter, who, while fate betrays, may feel the flow that calming psalm can raise, and prize the favor of our lengthened days. There's another a program that I saw at the Glimmer Glass Opera of Cooperstown that also affected me very strongly. It was the Verdi opera La Traviata. I'm going to write it up here. It's such a, a such an overpowering and in some respects um, uh, astonishing production, filling you with such mixed emotions that I use just about all the poetic meters or rhythm schemes that I know, including uh, uh, let's see. Of eight beats, six beat, five beat, four beat, two beat, and one beat lines variously patterned throughout. La Traviata, or The Woman Led Astray, appeared to me to walk the perfect human path of righteousness, desiring love and pleasure in their hugest depth and height. No less would Violetta singing win the day, and love for him that would, Alfredo, she would vow. A problem, though, appeared. His father swore he'd not allow the ill-advised enamored boy to marry one who'd left the flock. Parental pressure made a mock of all that proves a life worthwhile. And now, the shock. Poor Violetta's conscience he attempted to beguile. How can Alfredo's sister, purest heart, oh sweet, get married to a worthy man who'd like to seem respectable in public view if you, a household with your chosen one, continue to maintain? Renounce the wayward boy, for only so you'll truly gain. Redemption for his sister dear, from father gratitude. I, Violetta, must reject her lover. Only so will sister's reputation whiter stay than snow. The Lord has made a heaven that is well endued with love for mere repute and pleasure for the prude. Poor Violetta's been convinced that here will duty lie. Regrettably, she's got consumption and must quickly die. A double punishment? Why no? A triumph in the sky. All's pardoned, all forgiven, and a martyr saint is made. A swollen superego rules the globe, and so the play is played. Well, let's find something a little more cheerful, okay? I think I have it. This is one of my all-time favorite songs. This was written by Mussorgsky uh, to lyrics that were translated from the German into Russian. Uh, in Goethe's Faust, it's sung by the devil figure, Mephistopheles. It's called Song of the Flea. It tells of what happens when a flea uh, uh, somehow gets an entryway into court and becomes there a political figure of great importance. 
I read the both of them. I have studied German and Russian, and I combined impressions of the two uh, with impressions of the performance, which happens to be here by Fyodor Shalyapin, one of the great bass baritones of all time. I pick for my rhythm in the song, the rhythm as it was sung. Who better than Shalyapin of noble flea to tell? The favorite at royal court, it cast a regal spell. The king of velvet frock coat, the tailor made to sew. The flea, a fitting dignity of latest mode might show. The queen and all her fräuleins, they barely might survive. So bitterly they're bitten, they can scarce remain alive. The flea became prime minister with ribbon and with star, and hordes of fleas would follow it. They know where nobles are. And no one tried to swat it, no touch would flee from it. With us, twould quickly smothered be, and that's the end of it. Mephisto wrote this ditty with gloating and with glee. Pray God preserve us humble folk whose leader is a flea. Let's try another Russian, also a very inspiring figure, in fact, one of the major people in the history of 20th century music, and that is Stravinsky. Just a moment. Right of spring, I have learned that the girl hadn't died. She had whirled as a dervish and firmly relied on the god of the morning who, vernal, returned and outpouring, rewarding, had spermed her unspurned. In their sorcery centuries earlier, too, had the maidens that fainted in mercy come through, guaranteed that their blood would by none be required when to flood their new being with sun they desired. When the priest had with osculent zeal given earth his profession of faith in a forthcoming birth, catabasis would high and estasis imply. He with blessing had promised the girl wouldn't die. Little death to be blessed, greater death to be shunned. On our flame stream, the highest of light rays have sunned. With particulate energy, all of us whirl. I'm a dervish no less than the light-favored girl. Another of my favorite composers is Sibelius. He's from Finland. He wrote Finlandia, which I got to play in all state orchestra in high school. And I was thrilled. We played it in the Mura Hall in Indianapolis, Indiana. That was the hall of the Masons and everything was uh, gold and, uh, and, and plush. Jean Sibelius is extremely good at evoking the landscapes of his native Finland. And in this poem called Tapiola, perhaps he has done it as well as ever he did in his life. I love this orchestral work. A drum crash, then from song, a phrase recalled, a warning prophecy, it happened twice. The oboe frames another broken thought, and all the while a long, low tone holds through. Then, after uprush, panicky and brief, the violins take up the fragment theme in supple, curved, elaborated form. And we are asked to think on it a while in higher and in lower tonal range. In question, then in answer form, until the motive that the woodwinds come to love and by the string group taken up in turn, arouse the brass to join awoken tones that move the prime motif to be reshaped in longer floating formulation. Then a burst of strength disturbs the air, the rushed disjointed duplets, brave attesting flight, the tiny 
timid cries of little birds, then larger ones, more active mood create, and now a pensive, baffled atmosphere must yield to force of what is coming on. The theme that we began with plays a role. A blast of trumpet, drum supported, starts the third and final part of autumn's chant. The maelstrom gathers energy and strength, while the initial theme will try with grace to reaffirm. But no, huge random gusts, an after calm awaiting, whence uprise the frightened birds that cover all the skies. The leaves a tremble high, a statement raise, the onrush, the assault, will settle down. We're left in quiet as we'd been before. The clamor, the tranquility, the might have made a somber and a solemn psalm. Now I'd like to uh, conclude with a couple of folk traditions. I have a lot of them in the book, but I, I've chosen the Spanish and uh, the Irish. Uh, I would like to read you a poem about uh, Sarasate. This is 71. The great Spanish violinist composer. I was given something of his to learn in high school, it was called Maragena. I cannot say I completely mastered it, but I certainly learned the first page before some of the uh, more formidable uh, trick stunts begin on page two. And that's still in my mind. And I sang it for uh, a cab driver from Ecuador one day, and that helped produce this poem. I had been listening to Sara Sati's Zigeunerweisen, which means, um, Gypsy melodies. We talked of song. The taxi driver hailed from Ecuador. On violin, when I was young, I learned to play a tune, deep feeling, sad and slow and Spanish. Heart you must outpour and save your bow for what you know will happen, though not soon. Each lengthened phrase, a half a dozen rapid notes would end. Or when emotion from a greater depth was coming through, in fit proportion to the strength, these two might then extend. More drama to the stretching out, more pleasure gave to you. Well, want to hear it? Sure, I sang to show what I had meant. The Sarasate Maragena brought me back to youth. A single string. The lowest proved it to the full extent. Back then and now again I felt the heart portraying truth. Sigeunerweis in German, term for gypsy melodies, felt blended with the singing and the playing I had done. The grand majestic flourishing the grown-up soul would please. The orchestra and gloried violinist are at one in declaration, testament, flamenco joie de vivre. The fiddler now will take some time, her bag of tricks to show. The left hand, pizzicato, high harmonics, bateau ivre. Then holy prayer, thoughtful and with silences that glow. Finale, frisca, Liszt, in his Hungarian Rhapsody, had used, as in the middle movement, opera quotes we heard. So Romani and Magyar helped the Spaniard make for me a riant blithe inspirer for a blessed poetic word. Now what I'd like to do is show um, how that ties in with the Spanish folk poetry that I used to read. Here is uh, a setting by me of a simple verse. This is the entire folk song. I've never heard it sung, but I used to have five volumes of Spanish uh, 
uh, songs that were folk tunes, and but the music wasn't given. Instead, only the lyrics. Uh, but this one comes from Cantar que sube a la boca, and here's the entire poem. Cantar que sube a la boca es una gota de miel que del corazón rebosa. And that means song arising to the mouth is a honey drop that comes from an over brimming heart. Wind breath wafting from the south brings to you the halidoms of a man's devoted art. Soul a melody begot pollinated by the bee that on field of beauty fed. Dearest maiden, Take the thought that for you melodiously love to sweet expression led. Bloom unfolds to drink the air that on summer wind arose, and to you my life is born. Darling of my hope most fair, may the tune that overflows hearten you this heaven morn. And now, I would like to give you something quite interesting that I discovered only recently. Oh, Carolan is one of my <clears throat> favorite composers. He he lived from the uh, in the second half of the 1600s into the uh, most of the first half of the 1700s. He led a long life. He was a blind harper, and he would travel to the the gentry manors, and if they gave him a good bed and breakfast, he'd play them. Uh, in the morning, the tune he had composed for his kindly hosts and would name it after them. Most of these people's names are, not, are only known now because their visitor composed a tune for them. We can know or at least guess, uh, let us charitably suppose, that they were hospitable and gave him his tunes worth of good food and rest. Uh, anyway, O'Carolan wrote a, a piece called Planks to Payton. Uh, I can sing the part A just to show you. Uh, the, I don't have to do it, but I, it's just fun. Nice, huh? Uh, I take an epigraph from the poem that uh, Tom, Thomas Moore, Lord Byron's friend, uh, wrote to these notes. And the best of all ways to lengthen our days is to steal a few hours from the night, my dear. That'll give you an idea of the tune. And what I did, I, I do not offer Moore's poem in this book. Instead, I wrote one of my own, because that's my idea. You take music and you write words to it. And if somebody else has done it first, that makes no difference. Zabolotsky wrote a tune about Beethoven, or words about Beethoven, and I don't mind that. I, in fact, paid him special honor and homage. So here's what I wrote in conclusion to my reading today. Oh, Carolans, <clears throat> <coughs> better get your voice in order first. Oh, Carolans, harp resounds for me, and the night in delight abounds for me, when the lyre I hear revealing the cheer which Ireland inspired reastounds for me. I'm loving the troubadour lines you make, and for sweetheart to hear the designs you make. Tom Moore, you've a heart that's mastered the art of rousing the mind with the wines you made. Dear Flannery, Harbison, voice and strings, you make me a man who rejoice and sings. With Caroline Moore, quartet of the pure, I join in this heavenly choice of kings. I want to remember it all my days in dream and awake to recall my praise. I'll croon it for friends, the tune that commends a soul that with this from the fall I raise. Thank you. Mm -hmm.